Hey guys, it's Matho here once again with one last build for the last epoching that I've been working on and fucking around with. And then I'll also share some final thoughts on um, having played this game for a few weeks now. Uh, but the build I've been working on has been the Acolyte Lich Reaper. Um, so no real idea about what the fuck's going on with this business. Uh, just kind of told that I could transform into a lich, checked it out, went, yep, that's cool. Let's build one and see what happens. It started to look kind of like you want to run around and just cleave some cunts. And uh, that's kind of what I built the character to do. So it's got different things you can do with it. You can kind of use an attack, like you can use a spell, you can try and go low life, you can go ward base. Um, most things seem to point you towards going low life, which is not the conventional way of low life in this game. So typically the way you'd go low life is some items that drain your life and give you ward instead. This type of build and this type of um, low life shenanigans pushes you towards um, locking your life at a low amount and then operating at that amount. So. I don't have ward in this build, I really wanted to build some ward into it, but the way it works is it takes away all of your ward to lock you into that low life scenario, thanks to Death Seal, I think it's called, which is all of those like green squiggly lines going out around me. Uh, it doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but you can build into it to do more damage. Essentially, the purpose of it is to put me at low life, which benefits me in the way of um, giving a bunch of damage basically. And then I also built into having endurance and um, endurance percent and stuff so that when I'm at low life, I'm basically always taking 60% less damage. Um, so it ends up functioning, I guess, kind of similar to petrified blood in PoE. Uh, and then we are just a lich, which runs around with a scythe. Um, it's a pretty specific way of building because there's like a unique that makes things a lot better for your scythe cleavability, which I think is called harvest. Um, so you rather are forced into some some things if you go with this type of a setup. I tried to be as flexible as possible, but then it just kind of makes sense to wear certain things and do certain things. And uh, yeah, this is the result. It's not a bad build. It is pretty specific though, and it's pretty tough to get up and going um, until you've got the right stuff. So I was feeling a bit flimsy with it um, throughout the leveling process. Like it wasn't anything special. It got you through. I leveled with Harvest and Lich all the way through up till this point. Throughout the campaign, it was okay, just a bit slow. Um, and then it started to really start kind of slow down during um, Monoliths. And by that point, I was like, I don't know about this build. It's getting a bit iffy. Once I got the big scythe on that like kind of gives you a much bigger damage range and then gives you some extra area and stuff and I'll show you guys that in a sec. Um, then it starts to feel a bit better and the damage ended up being good. Once I got a bunch of cooldown reduction, uh, then things started to feel pretty good as well because I'd just be teleporting around quite a lot more often and I could sustain my um, Reaper form better. I could sustain my uh, low life much better and in the end it did feel like a much more of a buildy kind of build i'd be curious if, to see if people can push this or have pushed like melee lich further than i have because um i'm not really sure where the limit lies beyond what i've done um i could make like a few extra upgrades here or there maybe at most double my damage but it feels kind of limited in its scope um as for what can actually be done which is good enough for like empowered monoliths for sure, good enough for probably up to two or 300 corruption without feeling too bad about um, your situation. You are extremely melee though, there is that. Um, you can scale some area on your uh, little cleave ability. It looks very small right now, that's because the area doesn't scale the effect for some reason. So I have scaled the area a bit, it's maybe twice as long, one and a half times as long as what that graphic shows. But yeah, not being able to scale the area is pretty unsatisfying. And then it's still not a huge area compared to, um, you know, just plain being melee. So it is a bit annoying. Um, there's that problem. I'm not sure how much further you can take life for this thing while trying to maintain some damage stats. Uh, this is just one bullshit death I experienced that I wanted to share. The fuck is that? How Come on, man, I'm playing offline. Like, there's no lag. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the boss DPS seems to be okay. You can just kind of stand still for the most part and um, wail away with your flailing sort of harvest ability. 
Uh, and once you have Lich Form enabled and Green Life enabled, you essentially have a cheat death. So you can take your health all the way to zero. You'll uh, revert out of Lich Form and then you'll have a full blown regular life bar to deal with, but you are not quite as powerful because Lich Form is what gives you um, a lot of your attack speed and um, some extra damage and stuff. I don't fucking know. Uh, so it is a lot better to be in Lich Form, but then, yeah, you can still function as a build without it. It ends up being a bit weird, bit different, bit uncomfortable at times, but a cool enough build and something I didn't hate playing and will probably take to 95 or so and still um, try and make some upgrades on. So it's a cool archetype, it's a cool system, feels a bit limited in its scope, but either way, let me go ahead and show you how I build the character and how it functions. Okay, so I'll try and keep it brief. This is a character level 91 Reap What You Sow, uh, Reaper or like a Reaper form. Um, so it is built around like it's an acolyte that turns into a lich as a master. It, it is built around the Reaper form button. You press a button and it will turn your life bar green and it will slowly drain your life until it drains it faster and faster and then... Um, once you've run out of the green life bar, you turn back to your regular form and um, then you still do things as normal. You do solve the life drain through either health regeneration, healing, or the way I've done it, leech. Um, and then, like I said, if you press your death seal, it locks you in at a certain amount of life that you can't go above, um, but you can certainly still go below it. So that's basically the intricacies of Reaper form. The benefits of going Reaper form, well, there's a few things here or there. Um, you gain whatever the things it can give you here. Uh, so we've got like extra armor, we've got some resistances, we can go a bit faster, we can attack a bit faster, uh, do a bit more damage, do a bit more crit multi. You get a second um, sort of dash uh, reap that lets you just dash a little bit you can build a lot more into it to be a longer dash or a dash that hits very hard um, and then otherwise i don't know that's pretty much it and you look fucking sick you know this is a default look with no mtx or anything looks okay um, but then reperform you look really cool i think so Probably one of the coolest things in this game. Like I said, this is the only other thing you get. Reap over there. So then it's just an extra dash. So you can do your regular transplant, which is your uh, teleport, and dash as well, if you spec into it. So that's what we've got going. Um, and then, yeah. Let me just double check. I didn't miss anything. Reaper form. Uh... That seems to be about it. Okay. So then, yep. That's, that's the whole purpose of the build. And we've built around... Um, Harvest, which is your melee ability, hits all enemies in area in front of you, dealing double damage to those that are cursed. So that's part of where some quirkiness and jank is involved in this build, because uh, you have to curse things with, there's a couple of curses, but essentially it's just a big AoE, kind of like curse in PoE, that, um, you know, enemies need to be cursed before they take much more damage. And because we've built around that, because um, Harvest also has some extra nodes involved with that, without cursing something, you're dealing like a third of your damage or a quarter of your damage, something like that. Uh, so making sure things are cursed is pretty annoying. You can turn it into an aura, which then drains your mana and then also looks a bit weird and it can have its own annoyances. Um, or you can just self-curse like I do pretty much always throughout the videos. You'll see that I was like self-cursing or um, transplant also drops that curse when you... Um, where the hell is it? Uh, I think it might be somewhere on the tree curse transplant. That's a bone curse area. Uh, this. When you arrive, you will curse things as well. Um, so we do that. So during boss fights, you know... We've, we're doing this every few seconds very comfortably uh, or against plenty of targets, you know, cursing things pretty regularly. But then sometimes when things aren't cursed, just during regular gameplay, I'm throwing out a curse all of the fucking time. So it can be a bit annoying, but I did not like the aura that it had that you could spec into instead uh, this thing because then it doesn't like do mark for death and it drains your mana and I don't know, it didn't look good as well. Something like that. So the curse itself does fuck all damage as far as I can tell, but it um, enables a few things like a car. It's got some 
you know, reduced armor stuff. It can give you like a bone armor. It does mark for death. Uh, so there's some stuff involved there. The harvest itself, like I said, you can spec into a bit of area. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference. We spec into crit and more damage and stuff. Um, there is a huge crit node over here that I still kind of want to try and get to and try it out, which gives us a lot more crit. So it might completely solve crit for this character. Uh, it will cost a bit of um, life, but I think I'm okay with that given the leech and everything that I've got. Um, other than that, what else do we have? Uh, Death Seal, this is the one that's a bit weird as well. It's the one that locks you at a certain amount of life and does some damage. Uh, I haven't really built into it doing much damage, so I'm not sure how much it can really do. Maybe for the caster version of a Lich, it does a lot more. But once you get this, um, things start to make a lot more sense for the build. And then all of a sudden, you will kind of be a low life Lich thing. Um, so you don't get it till, you know, level 50 or some shit. Uh, so it does take a bit to get to, and that's when things start to make a bit more sense, like I said. And then transplant, you can build into whatever you want, some cooldown recovery, some extra utility, etc. And that's kind of the build. We are built around this um, axe, so you basically do whatever you want up to this axe, um, and it all works fine. But then it doesn't really get better than this, because uh, it gives you a lot of damage, a lot of multi. If you get attack speed onto it, um, that's great. And then it uses... Um, like an extra harvest buff that makes it do more damage and more attack speed, which is happening all the fucking time. So it's pretty damn worth happening. Um, and then, yeah, the passives are as follows. So we start out with some damage and armor and shit, and I don't know, there seems to be very little stuff that we can really spec into as a melee lich, so you kind of just do necrotic damage, int scaling, uh, some leech here or there, and um, yeah, this is the result. And then some extra int and armor and stuff from Warlock. As far as the gear though, we do have that. We've got, um, I went with the Void sort of um, uniques that do stuff for Doom. So more damage per Doom. Doom is, um, can we see that? Uh, there, yeah. Doom is something that gives you um, increases melee damage taken by 4% last four seconds. So just a debuff applied to enemies that um, gives you more damage. And uh, yeah, that's a bit easier to see. And then I kind of built around that. So Doom maintenance with the ring and the boots, and then also more melee damage for stacks of Doom on the enemy. Uh, because I've just had, you know, two LP items for all three of these, I just managed to um, slam some stuff onto them and then went with them. You don't have to use Doom items at all in this type of a build. You can instead just use regular items and um, it'll work out just fine. You know, cooldown recovery and movement speed. You know the name of the game by now. Um, we've also got this curse three potential item so it makes cursing a lot better a lot easier and then I can put whatever I want on that I'm still waiting for something like necrotic damage plus levels to harvest int some shit like that and then I'll put that on there um, got intelligence life endurance percent um, and uh, some crit and some shred and then these gloves still not sure I should be using them but I am uh, and then a chest I found near the halfway through yesterday's stream so around level 90 uh, that pretty much solves everything I'd ever want in a chest but ideally we are putting a plus reaper form and something like that onto one of these instead let me see if I've actually got one uh, a titan hearts titan hearts are really good item for the two-handed builds uh, especially when we don't regen health already we are leech based uh, so if I can get a two or a three LP one of these and put a couple of these mods on there should be a lot better so Yep, that's basically it. That's basically the build. That's basically all I need to say about it, I think. Some damage while transformed. Nothing special on the relics. Just uh, the idols, as always, just doing whatever. Um, and then our stats are like that. I've been suffering with 16 cold res, but it doesn't really matter. It, you know, I'm pretty tanky aside from that anyway. So it seems to be working out, but I am still trying to fix some res and make a few upgrades here or there. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So... Pretty cool character, but, you know, don't think it's going to be to everyone's liking. And it does take a bit to get going. Once it does, feels okay. But there's definitely bigger, larger, funner builds out there. All that said, um, just a bit of closing statements on Last Epoch. Uh, so, yep, played it for a few weeks. I um, will just make kind of a definitive statement. If you like ARPGs, you should like this game. 
if you for some reason don't, I don't think you're really into ARPGs. They've tried to bring a lot of modern stuff um, to the ARPG genre game and uh, make it as fun as possible and like, you know, build and skill centric and um, item and crafting centric. And I think they've done a pretty good job of that. Uh, I will say though that there is still a bit of a limited amount you can do in the game so you know you get to monoliths and yeah that's kind of cool for a bit it does get a bit stale after a while especially taking a second third fourth character through them um the dungeons are another something to do but there needs to be more there needs to be better more reasons to do them and stuff and i absolutely fucking hate the layouts that they've done for the dungeons at this point you know blocking off walls and stuff it gets pretty frustrating running those when you have to and then you're just running into dog shit dead ends and stuff so that needs to be sorted out there's still lots of bugs in the game so it still needs a lot of polish um a few things to fix here or there for the most part i do like the structure and the core of the game uh it's you know not huge crafting system it can be a bit rng and you know sometimes fun sometimes not particularly fun uh nothing massive like the poe system and um the highlight for me is absolutely the building, the skill system. It's pretty cool. Like most things that you build into are fairly viable and you can kind of make your own character on the fly. It's very enjoyable to do that, to test characters, to you know test builds, test skills, see what you like and see what you can build into. Um, and it's nice just being able to like, you know, take a skill into a very different direction than someone else just because you had different inspiration or different gear behind that. So I do like that and there is lots to explore with the skill systems in that. Um, you know, even more in the future sounds pretty good. Um, just more gear, more stuff to do in the end and more polish. And yeah, for sure, I would be most likely coming back um, in PoE, you know, downtimes. Uh, provided this game gives us a reason to come back. I'd absolutely be coming back. I had a lot of fun here, and I think I'd have more fun in the future as well. So nothing too negative to say about the game. There's a few things that could need fixing, I'd say. A few design choices not super agree with. Um, but overall, I think it's a good ARPG, and I think if you like ARPGs, you should like this game. And if for some reason you don't, I get the feeling you might not like ARPGs. If that's a fair statement to make. Um, so there it is. Uh, hopefully you like the build, hopefully you like the um, Last Epoch content. That is probably where I'll stop with Last Epoch after this character. I'll get back to PoE. I'll then um, go to uh, LA for a day, but it will suck away three or four days of my life. And uh, then we'll finish up with more PoE and get the PoE announcement and then go full steam ahead with another PoE league, which I assume is going to be colossal. We'll have plenty of PoE 2 news as well. Um, good stuff in the future for us, I think. So thank you very much for watching. And see you guys next time.